Well, hello everybody. How you doing? Happy Saturday. Hello to all of the people in GoPro Academy. Hello to the people who have purchased individually this advanced recruiting strategy webcast. I'm excited to be able to spend some time with you. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna spend about three hours together talking about strategies to help you move to the next level. And as we start, I just want you to know, I have the whole chat roll up uh, on screen so I can see it as we go, because this is gonna be very interactive. I'm gonna be covering some strategies, I'm gonna be going through some different content, but this is a coaching session. So those of you who need coaching, I want you to be thinking about what you need coaching with, and I will individually <clears throat> coach you through this process. And the rest of you, by listening in, can kind of, by proxy, get some personal coaching if you have a similar issue, okay? Now, recruiting is the lifeblood of our business. There's no question. Recruiting is... I mean, there's three things that we do inside of network marketing. Let's talk about that as we start, okay? The first thing that we do, we sell products using word of mouth. <clears throat> word of mouth advertising. That's what we do. We sell products using word of mouth advertising. Why do we do that? Because... Word of mouth advertising is the most efficient and effective form of advertising in the world. If a friend tells you about a great movie, you're more likely to go there versus um, just seeing an advertisement. If a friend loses some weight, you're more likely to ask that friend, how did you do that? And you're likely to take action on whatever recommendation they give you. If they go to a great store or they use some product that gives them some incredible results, <clears throat> and they share that, that's more valuable in today's cluttered world than any other form of advertising, okay? So that's what we do. Centerpiece of what makes everything work is all of us sell products and services using word of mouth advertising, okay? Second thing that we do We build and continually expand a network of distributors who are doing the same thing. Now, some of you have an issue when it comes to recruiting. Some of you have a challenge when it comes to recruiting. You're really, really good at this. This feels comfortable to you. This feels normal to you. This feels congruent for you. But you're, you struggle when it comes to this. And some of you hide behind this... Uh, I deal with a lot of companies that, uh, and, and individuals inside of companies that have this issue. And some of you may have it too. Comfortable here, uncomfortable here. And part of you feels like your, <clears throat> your passion about your product is really easy for you. And because of that, it's really simple for you to be able to share that with other people, and just feel good about that result. But this feels a little bit icky to you. This feels a little bit uncomfortable. So one of the things that I work with people to do, I work with companies to do, is to help you reframe this. Because <clears throat> until you can reframe your, understand, your, your look at this piece, you're missing out on the the real value of network marketing, which is leverage. And here's what I mean by that. If you, if you, right here, you really care about telling the whole world about your product and service and you really want, how many people, and answer me in the, uh, in the, in the chat, how many of you um, believe that everyone on earth 
should be using your products and services, and if they did use your products and services, that they would experience benefit, that they would have a better life, that they would have a better experience. How many of you um, meet that type of a mindset? But here's the question. <clears throat> How many can you reach by yourself? If you really care, if you care so much, if you're so passionate about your product, how many, can, how many customers can you connect to the product personally? How many can you do it? 50? 100? Think about how many customers you have right now. 200? Do you have 200 customers? 500? Thousand? Let's say you're just incredible and you do a thousand. Is that the whole world? Answers, no. But if you want to get past a thousand and really impact the world, let's say you want to impact a hundred thousand people with your product or service. You could either Try and do 100,000 on your own, 100,000 customers, which would take a lifetime. If you did, I mean, figure out how many, how much that would be. But if you have a team, what if you had a team of 100 people and you're trying to reach 100,000, okay? A team of 100 people, that would be 1,000 each. You did 1,000. 99 others did 1,000. You reached 100,000. What if you had a team of 1,000 people and you only had to reach 100 people each? That would be easier, right? You just had to reach 100 customers over the course of your career. 1,000 people on your team reached 100 customers. That might still be a big number. What if you had 10,000 people on your team? All they had to do was reach 10 customers each. See, that's the leverage. You don't, to reach, you, to reach 100,000, can you get there by yourself, yes or no? The answer is no. Can you build a team of others that can help you? The answer is of course, inside of network marketing. Now, can you personally sponsor 10,000 people? Answers, probably not. But can you sponsor 100 people over the course of your career? And then teach them to sponsor, teach them to sponsor, teach them to sponsor, and then it turns into 10,000 people? The answer is, of course. So back to this. Do you understand this? I hope you do, because this is really important. We build and expand a network of distributors who are doing this activity, selling products and services using word of mouth advertising. Got it? That's what we do. And then the third thing that we do is we we improve the productivity of our network based upon our leadership the quality of our leadership, because you can have two groups of 100 people, right? One group is highly productive, the other group's doing nothing. That's a function of leadership, okay? So <clears throat> bringing our leadership to bear to improve the productivity of this network. So I'm gonna be talking to you today, over these three hours, about how to build and expand your network of distributors your personal recruiting efforts. And then I'm also gonna be teaching you how to improve the productivity of your network when it comes to recruiting. We're going to assume inside of this coaching environment that everybody is already in the process of selling products and services using word of mouth advertising. Fair enough? Okay. So, uh, scroll up just just uh, two minutes on the, on the, I wanna just take a look at what you guys are saying here. 
Ah, don't get a test the outcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Our service is the best. Uh, scroll back down the other way. Uh, reload your browser if your video freezes. Uh, Yes, you can build a team, Margie. Can you personally sponsor 10,000? Probably not, but you can sponsor 1,000, teach them to sponsor. You can even sponsor 100 and, and, and duplicate it from there. All right, so we'll talk about all these different processes over the course of this webcast, but just understand these three things. This is what we do inside of network marketing. We sell products and services using word of mouth advertising. We build and expand a network of other distributors doing the same thing and we improve the productivity of that network. Those are the three things that we do. Two and three is what provides us with leverage. Number one is just a job. This is just a job. Two and three creates a business. So some of you just have a job. Uh, you're doing it all. You wanna create a business and create some leverage. And let me just talk to you about leverage for a moment. <clears throat> I want you to think about the richest people in the world. Richest people in the world. Um, and how they became rich. So, my phone's over there, but if I, you, you hand it to me. Take a look at Apple, right? This is my iPhone X. Is it iPhone 10 or iPhone X? 10? It's meant to be 10? Yeah. All right. This is my iPhone 10. Now, did Apple create an individual iPhone 10 for me? Just for me, that nobody else has? Answer is no. They created one, and then they duplicated it and sold it to the world. That's called leverage. Leverage. You think about Microsoft. On this thing, I have Microsoft Word. I have this, this software. Microsoft is a software provider. Do, did Bill Gates come into my house and, and set up a word processing uh, uh, program for me? No, they wrote one, Microsoft Word, and they sell it and license it to the world. They create leverage, okay? Amazon creates leverage. What you must do is take it away from just your personal efforts and move it into leverage if you want to create true wealth inside of the network marketing profession, okay? So <clears throat> with all of that said, I wanna talk to you about Mm, three different areas or three different big categories when it comes to recruiting. And as you're, on, as you're watching this, I want you to be thinking about questions and we're going to be talking about, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm guessing Ookla's, I'm frightened of the phone, I struggle to pick up to call prospects, we'll talk about that. Um, how to sustain your builders and, and inspire, we'll talk about that. How to guide and keep your team, what quality of leadership is needed, we'll talk about that. This lasts three hours, Sarah, in South Carolina. Exact steps to support your team to build, we're gonna talk about that too. I'm gonna give you lots of different strategies. Now, there's different, different ones of you are in different places. Um, first area I'm gonna be talking about is um, if you're stuck. Okay, second area I'm going to be talking about is bringing in the class of, is, is a personal recruiting campaign to bring in the class of 2018 for you, how to, rec to recruit in bunches personally. And then the third category I'm going to be talking about is strategies in order to get your team to do more, get your team to recruit more, get your team to move into action, get your team to get things moving, okay? So those are the three big categories. Let's talk about the first one. Uh, and how delayed is the chat? 30 seconds, 25, 30 seconds. All right, I wanna ask you a question. How many of you feel like your warm market is destroyed? You feel like you've talked to everybody, you have you have burned out your warm market, everybody said yes or no, you've made mistakes, but you don't feel confident that you have a lot of people to talk to um, when it comes to prospects, personally, okay? You feel like too many of you um, have, have gone out and wrecked your warm market. How about you? 
Anders says wrecked. Bonnie says me. Carol says me. Hi from Oregon. Yes, yes, me. Totally gone. Yes, 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 yes. 10%. Okay. Yes, burned out. Mine is gone. That's so me. Yes, yes. Any others? I can only contact cold market. Um, hard time knowing what to say. Have I really burned it out or just I just wobbled it? <laughs> no business prospects. My family tired of me. Warm market is wrecked. Burned out. Mine is gone. Collecting in the cold market. Yes, I don't have it all. Um, okay, got it. Now, whether the, I'm, I'm going to be uh, giving you some strategies today to help you break loose from that. Now, whether this is you or not, and I still see him coming in. Yeah, yeah that's me. Whether this is you or not, um, just assume that this is going to be a recurring theme inside of your group. So I'm going to be coaching you, per, coaching some people personally on how to overcome this issue. And the second part of this is for you to be take the notes so when you run into somebody who's facing this issue and has this limiting belief, that you give them some instruction on how they can uh, restart their business, okay? So one, it's a, it's, a, it's a tool for you. Two, it's a tool for you to train others, okay? Now, <clears throat> if you've burned out your warm market, you have two strategies. Uh, strategy one, well, I don't know if it's exactly two, but I'm going to call it two for a moment. One is to rebuild your warm market. This takes a little time. Let's talk about that. Rebuilding your warm market. Now, most people... They get involved in network marketing. They're so excited um, that they're like a little puppy running around the room, peeing in every corner. They just can't help themselves. They run off at the mouth. They call everybody and they they act like a predator almost, you know, like they're a blind, hungry dog in a butcher shop running around saying, join my business, join my business, join my business. They do, they do inappropriate things. They use cheap salesy language. They, they talk to people at inappropriate times. They mislead people and say they you know, want to get together, but, but it, it, they didn't really want to get together. Or sometimes they talk to them and the person isn't, doesn't want to talk about a business, so they stop talking to them altogether. So the person feels offended that the only reason you even wanted to connect was not about friendship or family. It was only about business. Um, a lot of times it's just language problems, right? So... How do you rebuild your warm market to the point where mm, people are open again? People are open again to taking a look, to understanding what it is to ha that you have to offer. Because that's really the goal. The goal is that people understand. Our goal is not that people join or people buy. Our goal is that people that we educate people to the point that they under, understand, that they, became, they become educated and they understand what it is that you have. And once they do that, they'll either say yes or they'll say no. So I'm gonna give you some strategies with rebuilding the warm market that I've coached others through um, that will give you a better quality of life and give you a good chance of rehabilitating that market and at least helping those people understand what it is you have to offer. First thing is go to them and apologize. Go to your warm market and say, hey, it's clear I made you uncomfortable. And that was not my intention. I was just too excited. I was too fired up. I didn't really know what to say. I assumed too much. And... If I made you uncomfortable, I apologize. And, you know, you, again, that, that's not my intention. I want us to be friends. I want us to be family. And I never want you to feel uncomfortable. Okay? Um, that's step one in rebuilding your warm market. Is just go apologize to them. 
I'm sorry. I was just so excited. I wanted you. I, I thought for sure you'd be a part. You want to be a part of this, and uh, I overstepped. So for, forgive me. I'm not going to bug you about it. I would like you to understand what it is that I do, um, because I do think it has value. But I don't want you to feel pressure. Okay. So that's the first thing. Second thing. is be a giver. <clears throat> there are two kinds of people in the world, generally speaking, um, a giver and a taker. And some of us are not takers in the sense that we take advantage of people. We just don't give. We just kind of stay neutral. Um, a lot of people introverted, like myself, um, prior to getting involved in network marketing, I wasn't the guy that was life of the party. I wasn't the guy that was volunteering to help somebody move their apartment. I wasn't the guy who was, you know, I wouldn't always show up for the parties and I, I wouldn't always RSVP for stuff. I was just really kind of self-contained. Um, so when I first showed up inside of network marketing, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm trying to be the life of the party, people are going, hey, 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 where were you? when I was moving my apartment. Where were you when I was doing this and I was doing that? And they had a point. So I became a giver. I started to help people do things without asking for anything in exchange. I started to connect other people without an agenda. I started to um, introduce friends to people that I thought they would be friends with or help people get a referral for their business or help that person move or be the first person to RSVP. And, all those different kinds of things, that rebuilt my reputation as a giver without an agenda. And then people naturally leaned forward and wanted to connect with me uh, on a more efficient way. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is when appropriate, um, Approach people for support. Here's what I mean by that. When appropriate. Now, if it's best if you do this at the very, very beginning of your network marketing career. Some of you who are brand new, this is perfect for you. Others of you that need to rebuild your warm market or you run into new people and you build a friendship, approach them for support. Here's what I mean by this. Let's say I you're my brother or my sister, and, and uh, so you're you know, obviously my warm market. I come to you, and I, it, let's say I've rebuilt. I've been a giver, and I've rebuilt my relationship a little bit, and I said, you know, listen, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna approach you about the business that I have, even though I'd like you to understand what it is that I do, but it would mean the world to me if you would be a customer of mine, even for a short period of time. I have this product, you can get a 30 day supply, it'll cost you $80. And all I want you to do is try the product and see if you get a result and support me in my business by doing that. And I'm not asking for a long-term commitment. I'd like you to just try it for a month and if you like it and you'd like to get more, then you tell me and I'll show you how to become a long-term customer. And if you don't, you don't even need to say anything, just don't say anything and we won't renew the thing, but you can consider your support of me complete just by trying the product for 30 days. Would you do that for me? Okay? If you do that with your warm market, imagine if you did that by your in, in, with your entire warm market, how many of those would at least tried your product for a month or your service for a month? How many of those would at least done that and felt like they supported you. It's like you opened a restaurant and they came to your grand opening and they tried your food. If they like the food, they're gonna come back. If they didn't like the food, they're not gonna come back. That's okay. Most of marketing is just getting people to try something, okay? So <clears throat> this is just a, a, a rebuilding strategy for your warm market. Go apologize, call them all and just say, you know, hey, sorry. I screwed up. We're still friends, right? You're not gonna avoid me at the mall, right? 
We're still getting together, you know, for a Super Bowl, right? So just, you know, take the pressure off that they're not this target. And let them know, look, I don't even care. You, you, know, you could do this business or don't do this business. It doesn't matter to me. I was just overexcited. I would like you to understand what I do, but that's cool. No problem. In the meantime, what can I do for you? How can I help you? What's going on in your business? What's going on in your life? What's going on with your relationships? What, what can I do for you? Forget about the business for a second. So apologize, be a giver, and then when the time is appropriate, approach them for support. Hey, it'd mean the world to me if you just use my product for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, depending on how long the product lasts. It only costs this. It'd mean the world to me. And then finally, you'll understand what it is that I'm doing. It'd be really awesome. I'd love that. Okay? So <clears throat> that's a, a little bit of strategy on rebuild. Anything, uh, uh, any, any general comments that they, people are giving here? They're liking it? How do you get over the fear of asking for support? We'll get there in a second. Um, what I would just tell you, <clears throat> once you've done this and this, asking for support is not a hard thing. Would you ask somebody to come to your grand opening of a restaurant you were opening? You know, would you ask them to do that? Would you feel weird about that? It's like, come to my grand opening, buy an appetizer. You know, come hang out and say, wow, isn't he something? Same thing's true with this, asking them for support and just saying, you know, hey, <clears throat> don't worry about the business. I'm not even going to bug you about that. But it would mean the world to me if you tried the product and give me your feedback. I'm not asking you to do it long term. If you decide to do it, you'll know either this is, you're, you like it or you don't in 30, 60, 90 days, whatever is appropriate for your product. If you like it, you can continue. I'll show you how to do that. And if you don't like it, hey, no pressure. But I appreciate the support in the meantime means the world to me. Now what can I do for you? That's not that hard. Um, so, okay. Rebuild the war market. Now, <clears throat> what? this takes time, right? What do you do if your war market's crushed right now? This takes some time to do. This is a three to six month process. You want to rebuild your war market? It's three to six months. Be a giver like crazy. Apologize to everybody right away. Be a giver for a while. And when the time is appropriate, ask for support. That's it. Okay? This takes three to six months of effort without a lot of expectation. So what do you do in the meantime? Here's my advice. Move heaven and earth to recruit one. And I've been in this situation myself, personally, okay? Um, where I talk to everybody. And I really believe that to be true. I talk to everybody. I called everybody in my family's address books. I called everybody I could reach from my high school. I called old teachers, um, anybody I'd ever worked with. I, did, I was full-time and blasted through all of it. And I had hit a wall, and I hadn't figured out yet um, how to never run out of quality people to talk to. Um, but here's, here's what I'm saying. Move heaven and earth, literally move heaven and earth to recruit one. I did the craziest shit in order to be able to recruit one person, you can't imagine. I walked around in shopping malls and talked. To, I set a goal to talk to every single person who worked in a shopping mall over the course of a week. I went and introduced myself to every single person working retail. Hi, my name is Eric. Uh, how long have you been working here? Look, I'm searching for some quality people because I'm expanding a business in this area. Would you be open for you know, breakfast or coffee or lunch or something, when are you on break? Literally, until I recruited one, and I'll tell you what you do with the one. I ran ads in the local newspaper. When I was in Minneapolis, I ran ads in the local newspaper to get the phone to ring, just to be able to recruit one. I put yard signs in, you know, out, out on the corner of the street, opportunity type thing to get the phone to ring. I put door hangers 
I put inserts in people's uh, newspaper slots. I did anything possible to recruit one. I moved heaven and earth to recruit one. Now here's the thing. You might say, well, how does that change? It changes everything if you approach it right. So here's the strategy for you. With this one, this one knows at least 200 people, right? These 200 became my prospects, my prospects. I recruit you, your 200 became my prospects. Now I had more credibility third party than I did first party. I, I worked with you to introduce, to get introduced to all 200 of these people. And that became my job for a while, while I was rebuilding this. These people became my job. Who can we meet? Who would be great for the product? Who can we talk to? Can you get them on the phone? Well, who can we meet for lunch? Who can we meet for breakfast? Can we have a home party? Can we meet that person? Can we go to their house? And I would go through that because I knew that I could recruit at least 20 people out of that 200 if I was introduced. I could get one out of 10, for sure. Maybe more, third party, but I could at least get one out of 10. So I bring this person in, these people become my prospects. And I work with this person to help them see the value in introducing me to these people as quickly as possible. And through this process of recruiting, I would help to educate this person through tell, show, try, and do. I'm gonna tell this person how to do it. I'm gonna show them how to do it. They're gonna try it as we're going through this process and eventually they're gonna do it. But here's the crazy thing. I didn't care that much how engaged this person was, so long as I got their list. <laughs> I literally, I moved heaven and earth to bring them in, and then it was like, look, let's go to work. And they're like, I'm afraid. I'm like, okay, who can I call? And I would call and say, let's say this person's name is Susan. Say, hi, my name is Eric Worry. I'm working with Susan, and she recommended you as a person who was one of the sharpest people she knew. And we're expanding a business in this area. We're looking for really sharp people. So I wondered if you'd be open to maybe having breakfast or coffee with Susan and I to be able to talk about the possibilities. See what I mean? So I would use Susan's name with these people, and I just called, Susan told me to call. My name is Eric Worry. I'm working with her, we're expanding this business, off we go. So <clears throat> this strategy right here is move heaven and earth to recruit one. And then those prospects become yours. See what most people do, the mistake that they make, is they move, uh, uh, move heaven and earth to recruit one, and then they say, go get them, tiger. And they set them off on their way, and they forget these 200 people, they leave, the. They leave these 200 people who are incredibly great prospects to this totally uneducated person. It's insane. And they just say, well, you know, you got to do it. And they try and kick the bird out of the nest day one and go recruit these 20, 200 people. They don't have the skills to do it. You have the time. You're building a business. You have more skills than they have. Move heaven and earth, bring in this one and go to those 200 like the expert. Go to these 200 like the superstar. Go to these 200 like the thought leader that's there to be able to help them change their life, okay? Let me see if I uh, um, get some questions here. Um, do you sign up those people uh, the, from the 200 under you or the first recruit? Under them, for sure. Um, I would assume first recruit, it's their people. Yep, uh, for sure, under them. Brilliant, uh, safer lifestyle, uh, marketing in the beauty industry. Same thing, same thing. Um, what you say for beauty, same thing. As far as leadership, could we cover? Yep, we'll cover that. So why don't you do three, you don't do three calls? Of course I do three-way calls. I do three-way calls with this person and their prospects for sure. I'm gonna do all kinds of strategies in order to be able to help that person move into activity to be able to reach these people. What I'm saying is, 
is your posture needs to be, those are mine. I'm going to go get them. I'm going to go inform and educate these people to the point that they understand what it is that we have. I'm going to be the professional that I am in order to be able to help them do it. I'm going to use every tool I can. I'm going to use the stories. I'm going to use the products. I'm going to use this person and their credibility to introduce me as the expert in order to be able to go make it happen. Yeah, I used uh, three-way calls for sure. Um, just reading through the comments, so just making sure that we're all on the same page. Bonnie asked a great question. How do you deal with a new recruit who just doesn't give you their names list? If they don't, you haven't educated them as to why that's valuable. You haven't educated them. You have to educate them. I can be the professional. You can be the connector, Susan. Susan, be the connector. Connect me with some people and let's go to work. Now, if they're not willing to do that and they close this off, this person becomes a dead end and then, then guess what you got to do? Move heaven and earth to recruit another one. Whatever you got to do to recruit another one. All of these strategies. I'll give you another strategy that I did to move heaven and earth to recruit one. I went to every car dealership in the Twin City area, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, I went to every car dealership and I asked who is number one. Who's number one in this car dealership? Because uh, I can only talk to number one. And I would tell this person, I understand that you're number one in this car dealership. That leads me to believe that you could be very successful in doing what I do. You're going to sell cars for the rest of your life or you want to do something else? Oh, I'm open to something else. Well, let, let's go have lunch. And I'd set up lunch. And that's what I do all day long. I did that in car dealerships. I did that with uh, real estate offices. I did that with independent insurance offices. That's what I did. Um, so... I'm just saying I was willing to do whatever it took because I, did, I had no place else to go. I don't know if you're willing to do whatever it takes to be able to bring in a person so long as it, it matches your morals and your ethics. Um, I was. So, um, see if there's any other questions. Uh, when you do the work, how do they skill up and become leaders? Tell, show, try, do. You're working them through the process. You're showing them the, you're showing them the power of this. Um, Power hour phone calls, we're going to talk about that for the 200. We're going to talk about that. That's part of the strategy in getting other people moving. Gateway skill can't wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if my downline is across the country? That's fine. You can still help them. We have technology nowadays. We've got Skype. We've got, we've got uh, uh, the phone. We've got iChat. We've got Zoom. We've got all those different things that you can use in order to be able to make that happen. Um, ba, ba, ba. How do you approach your downline without stepping on their toes, especially if they're doctors? Same way. It's like, look, look, I've got time and I've got experience. You've got prospects. Let's work together in order to be able to make that happen. Um, what if you don't feel like the expert yet? It doesn't matter. You're, you're involved 15 minutes earlier than they are. You're enough of an expert. See, here's what I did. I was 23, 24 years old when I started doing this. 24. When I started doing this part, 24 years old. Okay, um, how much of an expert can you be at 24? You can't be that much of an expert yet at 24 years old. But I acted like I was. That's all I did. And if people asked me a question I didn't know the answer, I said, that's an excellent question. Let me get the answer for you. And I would just go get the answer. I acted like I was a superstar, where I couldn't act that way in my warm market because they would call me on it. They would just say, oh, stop it. You're not, you're not that big of a deal but I would act like a big deal to this group. I, my persona that I wanted to own was I was a whiz kid. I was like Mark Zuckerberg. I was like this young, aggressive, uh, powerful, influential kid in the, in, the, in the market. They didn't know I was broke. They didn't know that I was you know, trying to figure this out. I, I did that and through that process, I made it happen, okay? Just understand this general example of you're going to rebuild your war market while you're waiting you're going to move heaven and earth to recruit one you're going to dive into that group and let's say <clears throat> i would i would use this strategy to build a whole new line because if you build one if you just recruit one right you recruit susan and then you work with her and let's say you recruit 10 or 20 people if you recruit 20 people for susan they're in susan's group 
Susan's still new. You have more time and experience than she does. You've been going through this tell, show, try, do, depending on how fast you did it. But Susan's 20 people each know 200 at least anyway, right? So that's what, 4,000? 4,000 people that you now have to talk to as a network marketing professional. Diving into those 20 and their people. So you're driving it deep, you're driving it deep, you're driving it deep, and through the process, you're going through tell, show, try, do, to teach them how to become independent from you as quickly as you can. Tell, show, try, do helps move people into leadership, but you drive this into depth, because you're gonna be going to these 4,000, and then you're gonna be going to this, what, 4,000 times 200 is what, 80,000? No, that's times 20, holy moly. I mean, it gets to be a lot two, three levels deep. It gets to be a lot really, really fast. I, the math is probably wrong, but I was not a great math student. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Mel says, I own my own regular business and I'm no better than anyone who does. And if you're afraid of someone because of their job title, then you should think about working on personal development. Absolutely. And part of this is just, you know, hey, act as if, get out there, be willing to be uncomfortable, and learn in the process. Just handle the situation. That's what I learned to do. Just got myself uncomfortable. I, you know, successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. Successful people live outside of their comfort zone. Successful people play where the money's at. And the money inside of network marketing is in expanding a team of people who are selling products and services using word of mouth advertising, growing that team as big as possible to reach as many people as possible. That's where the money is, okay? You want a job, just sell your products. You want a business and freedom, build a network of other distributors doing the same thing, and then improve the productivity of that network. Got it? All right, um, let's do this. Let's take a quick, Three minute break. Um, next phase we're gonna talk about, if you have any questions on this so far, I'll be looking at the chat during the break. If you have any questions on this strategy, which is this. Oops. Did I even write it down? Strategy number one, two, and three? I didn't. If you have any questions regarding this strategy of what do you do if you burned out your warm market personally, and what can you teach your, te your team to do? Write those questions down during the break. If not, we'll be back in three minutes and we're gonna start working on how you can recruit in bunches and bring in the class of 2018, okay? See you in three minutes.